In this tutorial, I will show you the basics of fluorescence decay analysis in KaiSurf. I'll show you different TCSPC data formats, show how you can load these different data sets, explain necessary corrections for accurate fluorescence decay analysis, and we'll analyze a data set by a multi exponential decay model. This data set we will save for later processing. In TCSPC, there are basically no defined data formats. However, most data are saved as comma-separated value text files. The headers in these files are often of variable length and sometimes there is no time access. In this window you see different TCSPC data formats that are supported by KaiSurf. To the very left, this is a binary data format from Becker Heckel, the Becker STT format. Then there is a, in a polarization resolved experiment a format that is referred to as Geordi format. In this format, the parallel and perpendicular detection channel are saved subsequently in a single file, as you can see here. The most common formats, however, are two column formats, where either the first column is a time axis or a count rate axis, as you can see here. Here the first axis is a time axis and the second axis is a count rate. To open a dataset for fluorescence decay analysis, first specify the experiment type. Next, specify the file type and the setup option. Here, currently, there are two different setups supported, either comma-separated value files or Becker Hickel STT files. When you want to see the more options of like the setup, click on File Parameters. You may have to specify the time and resolution of your experiment, you may want to rebin your experiment, and you need to usually specify the repetition rate of the experiment. In case you have a Geordi file, click here on Geordi file and select the channel you want to analyze. Here VM refers to a magic angle fit, where parallel and perpendicular are summed up for a given G factor. Now it is time to talk about necessary corrections for accurate fluorescence decay analysis. First of all, the fluorescence decay model needs to be convolved with the instrument response function. Sometimes this instrument response function needs to be corrected for dark counts. Most detectors are count rate dependent. Hence, a shift correction of the fluorescence decay model needs to be applied. Moreover, a non-fluorescent background needs to be considered when analyzing the data. And additionally, scattered light needs to be considered. Some instruments exhibit differential nonlinearities that can be corrected. Moreover, at high repetition rates, the laser repetition rate needs to be considered when convolving the instrument response function with the data. A list of parameters is provided on the web page, as shown here below. Once you loaded the datasets, select the dataset you want to analyze, select the model you want to use to analyze the dataset, and click on Add Fit. In this case, we use a fluorescence lifetime model, meaning a superposition of exponential decays. Here to the right now, you see your analysis window. In this window, different representations of your data and your analysis results are presented. The most important being the fit window. Here, you can specify the fit range with these sliders for your analysis. On the info, you see a summary of the fit result. On parameter scan, you can scan parameters, meaning you can determine the range where a parameter can is possible within the noise of the data. In residuals, you get the res displayed the residuals. Now go here to the analysis. Here, you should select the instrument response function. Now you can see here in blue the instrument response function and the model convolved with the instrument response function. The lamp background is referred to as LB. A positive value subtracts a certain number of counts from each channel. A negative value adds counts to every channel. Usually only positive values make sense. 
TS refers to the time shift of the instrument response function. SC refers to the scattered light. And BG refers to the background, a constant offset. To optimize the parameters, click on fit. Once you click on fit, all parameters that don't have the first checkbox checked will be optimized against the data. This fit, as you can see here on the top left by the weight residuals, is not very good. To the right, the autocorrelation of the weight residuals is shown. This chi-square is 1.7, it's not very good. Probably we need more components to, end, to fit the data. You can add a fluorescence lifetime component by clicking on this Add button. Now click on Fit again to optimize the model against the data. This fit is already better, but not perfect. Adding more fluorescence lifetime components to the model does not improve significantly the fit quality. Nevertheless, this model cannot describe all the features in the data. In this particular data set, the reason are differential nonlinearities that are not considered yet. You can correct differential nonlinearities by using or recording a linearization table using uncorrelated light. In the example data folder, the file recording the uncorrelated light is called white light. When you click here on the lower button on corrections, you can select a data set that corresponds to the linearization table. You can see here the fit is already much better.